Hi, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and thank you for joining me. And I am focused on a topic here that hasn't been given enough attention across the world. And we appreciate the fact that Bruce Willis has recently, this is in about February of this year, raised the awareness of frontotemporal dementia. Now, I'm going to come into whether or not Bruce Willis's diagnosis is any way connected with the uh, pandemic, and I'll clarify that in a minute. But I just wanted to utilize this opportunity to remind people about the importance of dementia and long-term damage to the brain, especially in the context of autoimmunity. And that's where two of my passions seem to have coincided or come together, because for about 12 years prior to the pandemic, my focus was on autoimmune, was on dementia, sorry, and right before the pandemic, I was just putting together the final pieces of what I thought was going for the holy grail of reversing dementia. Not easy, but I thought it was possible. Then the pandemic hit and I was able to utilize those research skills to then discover autoimmunity with regards to the COVID-19 infection and critical vaccination. So the two things have come together in a way that I wouldn't have anticipated before. So if you are interested in this topic, and quite truthfully, I think everybody should be interested in this topic, please join me. The link will be in the description. Dementia, the impact of COVID infection and vaccination. And it's important for us to acknowledge both in this picture because this is likely to be quite significant. So if you are interested, please register at the link below for the 14th of September, 7 p.m. UK time. So let's get back to a few important pieces of the puzzle. Now, before I go any further, as I promised, I needed to clarify exactly what has been being said and to make sure that we're trying to stay on side with what is factual. So I'm going to show you here what Reuters had said, and this was all the way from 2022, in April 2022. Fact check, no proven link between COVID-19 vaccines and aphasia. And so again, they were talking about this because at the time, Bruce Willis's family announced that he would retire after being diagnosed with aphasia, saying that it was impacting on his cognitive abilities. So suddenly now everybody thought, okay, because this is happening, was it linked to the either, well, I guess the time they thought it was the COVID vaccines. And so Reuters had come out quite clearly to say they didn't know his vaccination status and there was no evidence that it could have contributed to his diagnosis. And this was largely because his symptoms were occurring prior to the pandemic, as far as my reading had occurred, or had, had, had shown. The mistake they made, however, was to say a categorical statement that it couldn't have been related. I think that that's a little bit dangerous, that's disingenuous, because it's giving the impression that there is, it's impossible for there to be a link. Well, that's not actually true. So fact-checking the fact-checkers indicates here, this is a, a paper that was published, and we have here, this was in 2021, aphasia seven days after the second dose of the mRNA-based COVID uh, SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. And they highlighted that although it's rare, it is possible. Now, this patient happened to have a number of other conditions. He had a history of myocardial infarction, hypertension, high cholesterol. He'd got stones in his kidneys. And so he wasn't completely well, but he was only 52 years old. But within seven days, he had this characteristic pattern um, with regards to an intracerebral bleed uh, in the brain. And then his speech went with regards to that. Now, his, his speech had gone. But because of the timing, they thought the second dose could be followed by an intracranial bleed. And though they don't know the causal re relationship, vaccination cannot be excluded. So in his case, it was actually a bleed on the brain. 
that cause it. But this is where I said you have to be careful with regarding to say categorically that something is not associated. So coming back to the point in hand, why am I even talking about it? What is it that I am looking for with regards to this important conversation? So just to give you a little bit of information with regards to frontotemporal dementia. And I'm going to show you here, this is from St. Agnes um, Medical Center here. They have given a nice summary with regards to Bruce Willis and the diagnosis. And they're highlighting here, this type of dementia occurs when there is nerve loss in the brain's frontal and temporal lobes, affecting functions controlled by this area of the brain. And because of the neurons involved, it tends to cause communication difficulties like aphasia. This is what has happened with regards to Bruce Willis. There is no clear cause that can occur. It could be genetics, they said here, but that's not the only cause. Traumatic head injuries, that can do it. Lifestyle factors, that can do it as well. But in, in my context, what I'm focused on is autoimmunity. And I'll demonstrate why that, that is important uh, in a few minutes. So again, down to a few basic things. This here is a picture of the head and critically the brain. So it's kind of like the brain is being seen through the skull. And you can see here, this is the frontal lobe, which is just above the eyes and the nose right here. And just here is the temporal lobe. And in the context of this kind of dementia, frontotemporal dementia, it tends to affect the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. That's why it's called frontotemporal. Here is another picture of the brain, and I'll show this full screen here. In blue, this is the side view of the brain looking from the side. So this will here will be the right hemisphere. And this is the, in blue, is the frontal lobe. This here is the parietal lobe. This is the occipital lobe. And in green here is the temporal lobe. And below it here is the cerebellum. And so you can see again a different angle. In blue is the frontal lobe, and in green it's the temporal lobe. From the top, looking down on the brain, across here is the frontal lobe. Cut section through the brain, you can see in blue here is the frontal lobe. And this is where the brain is sliced in half. So you're looking on the inside of one hemisphere, and in this case this would be uh, the right hemisphere, and you can see the blue area here is the frontal lobe. So in frontotemporal dementia, the blue and the green are primarily affected. When I was doing the research, I found that to be really, really unusual because anatomically, they're not really directly connected. Even though it seems as though they're close, it's just because of the folding of the brain and that most of the neurons tend to pass around to get to the temporal lobe. So why would these two be affected together? And that led me to a very interesting neuron called the von Economo neuron. It was discovered in the early 1900s. And you can see here in the picture, I've got this big um, neuron cell body here with a big axon, and it's connected to many other neurons. And this very unusual neuron, they're very large, and they extend quite far in different parts of the brain. And they tend to occur not at birth, but tend to grow up to about the age of about six, where the numbers appear. And they're critical with regards to communication, understanding emotion. And so it, it's, it's only present in very high order primates, including humans, some apes, whales, uh, dolphins as well have them. And so these are very critical. And in my view, they'll also be important in the connection of language. And that's the bit about frontotemporal dementia that has affected Bruce Willis, was that his language has gone. And so when we look at the brain itself here, in terms of the, the lobes of the brain, certainly in a right-handed person on the left side of the brain, this part of the frontal lobe tends to be where the speech area is. And this can be affected in terms of aphasia. So it's a very important part of the brain. And critically, it seems as though it has a critical part to do with regards to 
how the brain works and what it's able to do with language. Here is a paper, um, and I'll, I'll show you the title quickly, The Von Economo Neuron Involvement in Social, Cognitive, and Emotional Impairments. I'll make this large screen. This was in 2022, and they were just looking here. They were just showing you here where it was primary, where they're primarily located in this green and red area of the frontal lobes that they're showing that. There's some overlap with regards to the insular cortex, but they seem to connect all the way through to the temporal lobes and the temporal lobes affecting with memory and so on. So the whole interconnection of this important neuron, I think is critical to how you would see the disease present with regards to memory loss, behavioral problems, and critically aphasia. So how is this connected with regards to autoimmunity? As I said, the von Economen neuron is unusual. And what they have found is that this neuron seems to be affected in the context of neuroinflammation. So this here is the next paper I want to show you. This is about neuroinflammation in frontotemporal dementia. And so they're highlighting that frontotemporal dementia is a group of progressive uh, neurodegenerative disorders. And neuroinflammation is a main contributor to the pathogenic process in frontotemporal dementia. And when they looked at some of the pathways, exploration of the neuroinflammatory pathways, immune mediated mechanisms, and the use of immunomodulation are promising research directions. Effectively, what they are finding is that, in essence, the inflammation in frontotemporal dementia could be contributed significantly by autoimmunity. And once you understand that, you would then understand how the two things come together in the context of the pandemic. My focus, as I said, on dementia, and you have to work out an important pattern that occurs when people get sick. Very rarely, if there is something like autoimmunity, does it affect everyone. It tends to affect only a specific subset of the population. And that subset of the population tends to be prone to certain patterns. And it's these patterns that I think, or these predispositions that could be affecting people in a way that if we are not careful, we could miss. I've got here an image uh, from the paper, and this is showing again the frontal cortex, and these are some neurons, they call them astrocytes, and they are looking at the inflammatory markers that would go and damage these neurons here and cause all of the patterns with frontotemporal dementia. Now, interestingly, they are not mentioning the von Economo neurons. That's my specific thought. I think that that's very, very significant in terms of the symptoms. And you can see here that the inflammation in the periphery crosses a compromised blood-brain barrier and then can cause all of the damage that is occurring with regards to the brain. And this is where the important bit with regards to autoimmunity comes back. Without a shadow of a doubt, autoimmunity is a part of severe COVID-19. Now, the scientific community has still not accepted that. My view is that it is the primary pathophysiology. But generally, in the scientific community, they would say that it is a part of the cytokine storm. It's not the primary thing. The second thing that I think that they have missed is that in terms of vaccination, what we have seen, certainly from previous studies, and up to a 28% rise in autoimmunity, low-grade autoimmune uh, autoantibodies in healthcare workers in Italy. And that was extremely important. And that was just because of vaccination. So when we put the two things together, this is where I think the link with Bruce Willis may be relevant. Bruce Willis had a predisposition for whatever reason. It may have been baseline autoimmunity, and he may have been having symptoms prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. My question is simple. Could either infection or vaccination have accelerated this process? 
because he was still doing movies, even with the limitations. So he could still function to a certain degree. But suddenly, within the pandemic, he seemed to have a sharp drop off. And that's just my observation. No information on that. But the point being, based on what I would expect around autoimmunity, I would expect that there could be a significant deterioration in his function in relation to one or of the one of those two things, either infection or vaccination driving this autoimmune response, which was likely to be present previously. Why is this important? Based on the previous trajectory before the pandemic, we were expecting a doubling every 20 years in dementia diagnosis. If we have a situation where autoimmunity is increased in even 5% of the elderly population, and you have to remember that the research is suggesting up to 28%, then suddenly all of the people who were predisposed could have an acceleration of their symptoms. And that's where people get confused. They, it's not as simple as saying either infection or vaccination causes the condition. It's not as simple as that. It's sometimes that it accelerates it. And understanding how it accelerates it would be important for us to be able to try and mitigate it. So that's where I am heading. As I said, I am coming from the clinical point of view. The politics is not just irrelevant. At this point, it's not so important. What is important is acknowledging the possibility looking for it and critically finding solutions. So I'll remind you again, if you're interested, join me at the link below. Let's make sure that I can share with you some of the thoughts that I have with regards to how this process occurs and what is likely to happen to the in the future. And if there are any opportunities for us to either mitigate it, which would mean slowing it, or potentially even try and reverse it. That, in my mind, is the holy grail. Not easy, and the pandemic has compl complicated it, but I still think that it is possible. Finally, I just want to again thank Bruce Willis and his family as we look at the statement that they have made. It is sometimes only when the stars make these statements and raise the awareness of diseases that people then focus on them and help us to get the opportunity to make a difference for others. So as they said here, Bruce has always found joy in life and he's helped everyone he knows to do the same. And I can say that in terms of his work, his movies, they've always been a big part of my enjoyment. It is very sad and we hope that we can find solutions in the near future, if not for him, but for everyone else. Have a great evening.